Welcome everybody to this lovely evening unwind class with a little bit of yin and restorative yoga. I'm so happy to see all of you who are here live and those of you who will be doing the recording, welcome. Um, we'll start off in a seat. I'm actually sitting in a chair, so you could be sitting on your mat or in a chair and I'll scooch back in just a moment, but we'll just take a few deep breaths. You can take a moment to close your eyes and inhale through your nose. Maybe even lift your shoulders, make a tight little squeeze there through your hands, make fists, squeeze your face, and then exhale out your mouth and let your shoulders draw back and down. See if you can do two more big breaths like that as you lift your shoulders. Inhale, lift, a little tighten and squeeze. Exhale out your mouth, let go of some of your stress from the day. Once more, breathe in together, squeeze, and exhale, release your shoulders and take a moment to just notice your starting place tonight. You can bring your hand up and we're going to do a lovely breath to unwind us. So it's called um, the moon breath, Chandra Bedana. So you'll cover your right nostril with your thumb and inhale left. And then breathe out the right side. Exhale right. And we'll just do five more of those, just nice and slow. Doesn't take much to start to activate our right brain to encourage a calming of your nervous system. Each exhale, tune in to the tension you're holding and let it go. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get us some music. Okay. Great. The next time you breathe out your right nostril, release your hand down. Notice how that breath felt in your body. Take another breath here through both nostrils now. And then we'll just do very brief side bends so you can sit comfortably and cross-legged. Bring uh, one hand, doesn't matter which, bring a hand out to the side and draw your other arm up. Feel a lovely opening through the side of your body. We'll call these our, it's not really a yin pose, we'll just call these more of our little warm-ups. And if you'd like to add on, you can move into a neck stretch by moving your arm to the side or behind you. You can bring your chin forwards or down to open an angle of your neck that feels good. And just breathe right into that opening on the side of your neck. Reach through your arm if it was behind you. Start to come up, use your bottom hand to lift your head up. Side bend to the other side. Feel the opening in your waist. Start to slowly move into your neck stretch, your arm to the side or behind you. Maybe drop your chin. Drop some of the tension in your face. And then reach through your arm again. Use your bottom hand to come up. Slowly come to center. And then we'll finish with a twist. So find your right side. I'll mirror you so it's not confusing. And twist to your right. Allow a few breaths. You can even move your neck side to side here if you'd like. twist over towards your uh, into the twist go a little deeper unwind on your inhale and twist to your left or your other side you can add those movements in your neck Good. and then hold your twist with your slow breaths to deepen into your twist. 
And as you unwind to center, feel free to lift your arms, bring your hands down to your heart. Think of one word that makes, helps you relax a little more, like ease or softness or peace. Bring this word into the rest of our little class as we prepare um, one last little movement so you can let your knees windshield wiper side to side. We'll prepare for our first yin pose. Okay, so you definitely want to have something to sit on, a blanket or something. If you have your pile, I told you to get blankets maybe a bolster. You can have all of that nearby. Sit on your blanket. Open your legs a comfortable distance. And whatever you have, it could be helpful to use it. So say you have a bolster, it might feel really great to rest your head on it and your hands on your blocks. Um, if you don't have that, you might just put a block under your rib cage. We'll start out in the center. And we're going to do a few different variations with our legs wide. We'll be in the center variation at least for another minute. So just come into it slowly. Find an, a gentle curve in your back so there's not one part that's curved way more than the other. Just come forward enough that you feel some opening, you feel some sensation here in your, maybe in the inner thighs, the backs of the legs a bit, but we don't want any pain, any numbness or tingling. And see if you can find a place of stillness. Letting go of some tension in your legs and want to keep your toes relatively in the middle so they don't have to be straight up and flexed but not going too far right or left beautiful so if you're quite happy here I invite you to stay here otherwise the variation that we'll try is a little bit of a twist it's really great for the low back and the hamstrings so you can turn towards your right leg Use any props, maybe something under your head or under your ribs, and shift over your right leg. Long, slow, deep breaths here as we hold this side for a little bit of time, probably about a minute and a half, which is kind of short for a yin pose. But we're doing just a lot of different variations in this pose. So all together, it'll be a long time in this pose. So notice your breath. See if you can focus on a place. So maybe your low back or the back of your leg and imagine you're breathing in and out of that spot. available, sink a tiny bit deeper into the pose. Maybe exhale out your mouth, drop some tension in your shoulders. Good. Now if you're over here to the right, slowly walk up. Shake things out if you need to. Go to the other side, turn, start with a, some length in your spine. Just slowly come forwards, find any sort of props you might need to give you some support. And know that you don't need to jump into the fullest stretch possible. You can just start really slowly. Close your eyes if that feels good. some time to sink deeper let go of some more of your muscular engagement so we can open the yin tissues in the body we can affect the ligaments
postures like to drop their head. I personally like to have my head on something whenever possible, my forehead. But you can also, if you're quite high in the pose, you can just have your head be in line with your spine. And again, feel how you can go a little deeper. lovely just to give your feet a little bit of love before we move on the other thing you can do to release that is the windshield wipers again great now we're going to shift into what I call a rebound pose so that was a lot of things we just did so we're going to come into a pose that lets us integrate that and the pose we'll choose is called crocodile pose so you might want to take a blanket with you and roll to your belly and either rest your forehead on your arms or your blanket or your face can rest to one side you can make a little pillow and we'll rest here for a minute so just let everything go this is a really lovely pose to um, tune into your breath so as you breathe in feel your belly and ribs press into your mat and as you breathe out feel your the weight of your body drop down when we're in a yin posture the blood flows constricted we're cutting off blood flow from certain areas and when we do this rebound everything can move again and it's like a reset a yin pose so you might need to come on your elbows so you can see without straining your neck so you can rest in your elbows and if this one feels good you can definitely stay here otherwise for the yin um, pose the shoulder opener I'm gonna scooch over so you can definitely see so you'll lay down and reach your right arm to the right it's helpful to have your blanket for your head you might have to double it up um, You'll just roll onto your right side. Your legs can be straight or bent. And I like to lift my uh, left knee, my top knee. And if I really want, I can grab my left foot. So you can just be here. And if you're in that first part, your hand can be helping you. Your hand, front hand can be just pressing there or you could be reaching back for your foot if you want. So, hope that makes sense. And you can just make this as deep as feels good. Just take your time. We tend to hold a lot of tension in this area. So if that's the case, maybe you go deeper for just a few more breaths. If you find that you are done, <laughs> come back to your belly or come back to your little sphinx pose. Take a moment there. You might have um, a 
little turn. If you're in Sphinx, elbows under your shoulders, you can turn your head side to side to just release any tension before moving to your shoulder chest stretch on the other side. So whichever side you haven't done yet, I think this will be the left side now. We'll bring your left arm out and roll to your left side. You might bend your knees and you can use your right hand to help give you some pressure or lift your right knee or grab your right foot so you get a little bit of a thigh stretch. And just go as much into it as you need to to feel that stretch, that sensation, that opening and see if you can relax your left arm so you want to release the muscle engagement so you can affect those deeper tissues. Nice, long, natural, slow breaths. And again, if it's helpful, think of that word you thought of, a word that brings you into a more relaxed state. that word, but maybe for you it's something else. How can I find ease in this pose or peace or softness or whatever your word is? Last couple breaths, maybe to scooch a little deeper. So in this pose to go deeper, you might be leaning your top arm top shoulder back a little more. Great. When you need to come out, you can choose, repeat your little rebound and crocodile on your belly. Maybe your head turns to the other way. Or you can come to your sphinx pose, which is a lovely little back bend. And if it's a bit much, your elbows can be more forwards or even hold your elbows, stack your forearms. And you can have your head down there as well. So you're getting some opening, some healthy compression in your low back without overdoing it, of course. I'm sure you all know this one. So you can just bring hips to heels, forehead on your mat or your arms. This will just be a little transition before our next pose. So this is medicine for your low back. for breathing into your lower back. Great. Now we'll slowly shift into a hip opener. And I want to give you two different options. Option one, you've probably all seen before. It's usually called pigeon and yen. It's, it's uh, called um, swan pose or sleeping swan. So you can have your right knee up here towards your right hand. And if you want to go deeper, you can lower your elbows, maybe to some props. And then the more accessible way, if you've got knee stuff, if you don't want all that pressure there on your knee, you'll lay down. If you've got your block, it can be really helpful. Have your block ready. So you lay down, maybe with a blanket under your head, 
bring your right ankle on your left knee and you can just put your block under your foot. That's a very relaxed way of doing it. Ah, but if you want more, your hands can take behind your left leg and drop your shoulders. And if you're really flexible, you can take the front of your knee. Feel free to straighten your left leg, straighten and bend. Okay, so settle in, we'll be here just about a minute or so. To really go deep in a yin class, we need a lot more than 30 minutes. So it's really challenging for me <laughs> to teach such a short class. But this will be a lovely class that you can return to the recording, you can return to it. And that's enough time to start to really uh, release your stress of the day and get you ready for bed. So we're at that point of the pose, can you go deeper? Can you find the discomfort and breathe into it? And then whatever pose you're in, the swan, the what I call window stretch, but is actually a reclined sleeping swan, you'll switch sides. So if you're doing the um, reclined position, you can put your left ankle on your right knee and put your right foot on the block or hold behind your right leg. to that level of the pose that works for you. Start to come into your breaths. Be really mindful as you're first getting into the pose. You wanna make sure that there's no pain. And in yoga, it's easy to think, well, I two years ago, I could do this pose, no problem. <laughs> but maybe tonight it's different. Try to be in your practice without judging or comparing yourself to how you used to be. And see if you can sink a little deeper in the pose that you're in. Your props could support your head if you're in the swan pose. restorative pose now and this will be like our shavasana so if you've got a bolster place that along your spine and have a blanket or a pillow for your head if you don't have the bolster you could just have nothing <laughs> or a folded blanket and then if you've got your blocks you can support your knees with your blocks. So if you've got your eye pillow, eye pillow on and your arms are by the sides. Um, for me, if I don't have a bolster, it doesn't feel quite as comfortable. So what you might decide to do is put your extra pillow or your extra blanket under your knees and then have a blanket for your head roll your blanket a couple times and then once you put your head on your blanket squish the first two layers of blankets around your head to create a little cradle for your head and just get as comfortable as you can here in either your reclined butterfly pose or your shavasana type
attitude as an animal does when they're like getting their self ready to go to sleep and they just adjust everything and walk around a couple times. Not that you have to do that, but make any little movements you need to be as comfortable as possible. Right away, start to tune into this feeling of being held and supported by your props. your chest move them across your body and your other arm will reach out away from your knees just spend a couple breaths in your twist on each side maybe still with your eye pillow on roll to one side if you're joining us for the closing and just take your time to come up to a comfortable seat and once you get there spend a few breaths just noticing your experience how you feel now compared to how you felt when you first sat here on your mat or on your chair. Just noticing the power of taking some time to unwind. And also the power of meeting together in a group, even if we're not in person. It's very powerful. Even those of you doing the recording, you can tap into this group energy. 
So let's close by sweeping our arms out and up. Draw your hands down to your heart. Do that again, maybe you again. Think of your relaxing word or phrase, your intention. Good. And then bring your hands to your heart. We'll end with one sound of Om, just a very restorative sound. Sound and send this Om to a good cause, a lovely person that could use some energy, the rainforest, wherever you'd like. Inhale to begin. Om. God, inhale. Bow your head towards your heart. And we honor the light in each other. Namaste. Before I let you go, just want to um, say it's lovely to have all of you um, joining now or later. And um, we ha offer um, almost 20 live classes a week. And if you haven't um, tried us online yet, you can do a two-week special for $29. And also, I would love your feedback because I'm very interested in doing a series of a class like this, some sort of short class that would start sometime after 7.30. So let me go ahead and stop the recording, and I would love to hear from some of you who are here. So, do-do-do. Thank you, all of you doing the recording.